Let's talk a little bit about the structure of the cell. I've done a lot of videos where we deal with things that go on inside of them, but I haven't done one where we just talk about the entire structure of them. So a good place to start is, let me just draw the membrane. And the, the cellular membrane is a good place to start, because this is what separates the cell from the outside world. And to a large degree, it kind of defines the cell. It, it defines it as this very, very small compartment. That's where the word cell came from. So let me label that. Cellular, cellular membrane. And all cells have a cellular membrane. Now, if we, if we think about the maybe the most important thing that defines a cell, you've probably seen in the DNA videos, and we're going to talk about translation and transcription and all of that, that what defines what a living organism is is its DNA. So all cells have DNA inside of it. And I won't go into the details of how DNA defines what an organism is. I've done that in some detail on the DNA videos. But all cells have DNA here. This is more of a kind of an anatomy of a cell video than uh, necessarily the function. But we'll go into the function, because we need to know what these different parts do. So this is right here. This is the DNA. This is the DNA, and it's in its chromatin form here. There's also little proteins here. There's pro not in all organisms, but we're going to stick to eukaryotes, and I'll talk a little bit about the difference between eukaryotes and prokaryotes in a second. But you have DNA. As I've drawn this cell right now, this is pretty much any cell. Any cell in, in any animal or plant or whatever kingdom could look like this. I haven't drawn a lot of the details. I've just drawn the DNA and the cellular membrane. Now. Here's kind of the first major division in the living world, or at least from our point of view, or that you know it, it seemed obvious, is that some cells have a membrane around the DNA, around the DNA. So they'll have a membrane around the DNA that separates the DNA and the chromatin and everything that makes up the stuff within the DNA, separates that from the rest of the cell. And this is called a nucleus. This is called a nucleus. And I said that's a major division, because when some people looked at some cells and they saw nucleus and other cells and they didn't see nucleus, they say, hey, this is a good way to classify organisms. So they called things that had nucleuses eukaryotes. Eukaryotes. These have a nucleus. So as I've drawn this cell right here, it is a eukaryote. Now, if you do not have a nucleus, you are dealing with a prokaryote. Prokaryote, no, no nucleus. And examples of prokaryotes, the two big groups of them, are bacteria and archaea. And archaea are really interesting. We know very, very little about them. They were uh, originally thought to be types of bacteria, but now people are realizing that they're this whole completely other group, and we, we, we've actually observed a very small subset of them. So it's a very fascinating group. And it actually turns out that evolutionarily speaking, you shouldn't make this division first, that it actually makes more sense to divide things into eukaryotes, I'll just write that, euk, bacteria, and archaea. That you don't want to do this division first, that they're actually three separate groups that you want to start off with. Okay, but we'll do that. We'll talk more about this in future videos. But if you want to say who has a nucleus, well, eukaryotes have a nucleus by definition. Who does not have a nucleus? Well, the bacteria and the archaea do not have nuclei, just like that. But I'm going to focus on eukaryotes because they tend to be a little bit more complex. They tend to be larger. And it, most of what we talk about, at least in the videos so far, are dealing with eukaryotes. You know, Eukaryotes include plants. Animals, we're animals, at least I am. Animals and fungi, and there are other there are other groups within eukaryotes, but these are the ones that we normally uh, deal with in our everyday world. But let's go back to looking at the anatomy of cells. So we have our DNA. We know that it gets transcribed into mRNA. That mRNA, that mRNA leaves the nucleus. And it gets translated into proteins at the ribosomes. So the ribosomes are these little complexes that could be floating all over the cell. And we'll see in a second that they can also be attached to these other membrane structures. So this is a ribosome. Ri 
ribosome. And if all this talk of DNA transcription into mRNA and mRNA leaving the nucleus and traveling to the ribosome to be translated into proteins makes no sense to you, I, there are several videos where I go into that in detail. But what I want to do is just focus on all of the different parts to kind of give a big picture of things. So ribosomes are where mRNA that gets transcribed inside the nucleus from DNA, where it gets translated translated into proteins. So you can kind of view them as the place where information actually turns into proteins, which then can be used anywhere else in the cell. Now, one interesting, and these ribosomes, they're made up of proteins, and actually they're made up of, uh, of RNA. And so one question is, well, where are, where are the pieces of the ribosomes made? Well, some are made by proteins, which might be made in other ribosomes. But some of it, the mRNA ribosomes, you can kind of view them as this big you know, as this mess, if you were to deep look detailed of there's some protein there and I'm not drawing it that realistically but then you have some mRNA tied in with the protein and the mRNA isn't used for actual information purposes like it normally is when it goes from DNA to the ribosome within the ribosome itself ribosomal RNA is actually used as part of the structure it actually helps the ribosome function as a ribosome so it's actually part of the ribosome and all of that all of that gets built in a part in a part of the nucleus called the nucleolus or the nucleole let me let me let me write that down so this right here this is interesting right here this is the nucleolus the nucleus or the nucleole. And it isn't a separate organelle, and it's not separated by a membrane, but it shows up in a microscope. So when people first saw that, hey, there's like a bundle there. there must, that must be like the core of the nucleus or something. But it turns out what it is, it's the densely packed, you got DNA and RNA, and that's actually where the ribosomal RNA, the stuff that makes up the ribosomes, is actually produced. But it's so dense that it shows up on a microscope, and that's why people decided to name it something different. But it is not membrane bound, it's not a, an organ within an organelle. It's just densely packed uh, of proteins and ribosomal RNA. It's where ribosomal RNA gets produced.